When you look at the gap between where you are and where you want to be, it can seem like a massive gulf, and it seems like to get across it you'll need to make massive changes. But making massive changes feels really daunting. You don't even know where to start, so in the end you just don't start. So if huge changes aren't a reliable way to improve, then what about small changes? Well, today I'm here to talk about a book that goes into great depth on this exact topic. Atomic Habits by James Clear is all about how you can use small changes to get massive results. It's the best book I've read this year and one of the most useful of all time. With self-improvement books like this, you'll often find that they're pretty light on actual substance. There'll be one or two good ideas and then 90% of it is just filler. But not this. This book is dense. The number of good ideas in this book is so high that it was a struggle to get it down to the top 5 for this video. And as you'll see, even then I had to kind of fudge it just to get it down to 5. So let's get right into it. The 5 best ideas in Atomic Habits. The first idea is that success compounds. You've probably heard of the idea of compound interest when it comes to saving money. You're paid interest on the interest you've made until the money you've saved ends up snowballing. Well, the same thing applies to habits. Each time you do something positive like practicing a new skill or getting some exercise, you'll benefit from being able to build upon all the previous times you've done it. So that each successive time you choose to do the right thing, you'll get more out of it than you did the previous time. This is how small changes add up to big results. I especially like the way this book explains how this compounding effect applies to knowledge. Each time you learn a new idea, you're also gaining new ways of thinking about all the old ideas, so that over time the things you learn will all build upon each other to create a life transforming change. The second idea is activation energy. This is the idea that new habits will appear to make no difference at all until they cross a critical threshold and then suddenly all the results will show up all at once. This idea can be visualised by picturing an ice cube being slowly heated one degree at a time. It will look like absolutely nothing is happening until it finally reaches the melting point. That last degree it was heated by, that didn't seem at all different from all the ones that came before it, unlocked a huge change. When something looks like an instant success, it's usually because you didn't see all the work that happened before that critical moment. Where it seemed like no progress was being made, but actually progress was being stored the whole time. The third idea is the mechanism behind how habits work. A four step process called cue, craving, response and reward. The cue is a trigger that initiates a habit. It's something in your environment that predicts a reward. The craving is the desire to do something, the motivational force behind a habit. The response is the actual action you perform, and the reward is the ultimate end goal of a habit. Every previous step is ultimately about the reward. The cue is noticing it, the craving is wanting it, and the response is trying to get it. Understanding this sequence is important if you want to alter your behaviour. Which brings us to idea number four. The four laws of behaviour change. That's right, one of my five best ideas is itself four ideas, so you're getting extra value here. The first law of behaviour change is make it obvious. This means making the cues that make you start habits extremely visible. If you want to get all fancy about it then you can call this environment design, and it means things like leaving your work open on your computer screen the night before you want to do it leaving books you want to read out on the table, and leaving your workout clothes out in a visible space instead of putting them away in a closet. The second law of behaviour change is make it attractive. The more irresistible you make something, the more likely you are to make it into a habit. In terms of brain chemistry, this means causing the release of dopamine, and luckily, this happens not just when you experience pleasure, but also when you anticipate it. So even when a good habit isn't very exciting, we can still use cravings to our advantage by doing something enjoyable right before the productive habit as a motivation ritual. If you always do something, like listening to inspiring music or making your favourite type of coffee right before you do a productive habit, then your brain will anticipate pleasure every time you even think about it and you'll really want to do it. Law 3 is make it easy. This involves removing any mental friction involved in starting something, so it takes you less energy to get going. 
you can implement this in an easy way by using something called the two minute rule. This is the idea that when you're starting a new habit, it should always take you less than two minutes to complete. Telling yourself that you only need to do something really easy makes it far less daunting and much more likely that you'll actually get started. So a habit like read every day becomes read one page, run three miles becomes put on my running shoes, and study for class becomes open my notes. Once you start doing this, you'll quickly find that you want to do a lot more than just the two minute habit. The fourth law of behavior change is make it satisfying. The idea here is what is rewarded is repeated. Since the actual rewards of a good habit can take a really long time to actually materialize, we can add in our own rewards in order to make something more immediately satisfying. Rewarding yourself with something like playing a great video game only after you've carried out a good habit is called reinforcement, and it's what will keep you repeating good habits into the future. Now that we've gone through the book's ideas on how to build new habits, the fifth and final great idea is about which new habits you should be choosing to build. The final idea is to choose identity-based habits. People usually come up with outcome-based habits, where the focus is on what you want to achieve, whereas you should be coming up with identity-based habits, where the focus is on who you want to become. There's a big difference in difficulty between doing things because you want something and doing things because you are something. And the most practical way to change who you are is to change what you do. So instead of the goal being read 10 books, it would be become a reader. And instead of the goal being run a marathon, it would be become a runner. Each time you repeat a new habit, you'll be building up evidence of your new identity. And the more evidence you have to support a belief about yourself, the stronger that belief will become. This is the end game of habit formation. Once you've built habits that are integrated into your identity, it won't take any effort to do them anymore. You'll just be acting like the person you already are. Thanks for watching.